Have you ever wondered who is actually winning the election, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Because all we hear about is the news media spreading false narratives and not accurately representing the data with what it is. So I put together one of the most comprehensive rankings of the candidates where we take a look at 15 different factors and I'll give you all the data so that you can decide for yourself where this is going. But first, if this is your first time here, what's good? My name is Sam. For those of you who are returning, it's going to break a CEO. So back in 2016, we had Trump and Hillary. And I did the back testing of this methodology using one of these factors that I'm about to get into to see who is going to win. And back in 2016, it predicted who was going to win, even if I use the data from beforehand. Uh, what I'm talking about is the two largest sites on the planet, Google and YouTube. Google and YouTube both allow us to track trends in search volume for each of the candidates' names. It's called Google Trends. You can go look up Donald Trump or Joe Biden, and you get to see which person is getting searched for more, right? Instead of coming up with a methodology to do some type of sampling or polling data where you're going to not represent everybody, and you're going to have biases in the way that you structure your polls and your data, and then the output from that is tended to be towards some type of special narrative, not just giving the information to let the public decide for themselves. There has to be a twist to it for eyeballs or clicks to try to get more money or just to put forth whatever propaganda that organization thinks is the right way to put forth things. And so I think having a more objective view when it comes to who is actually winning by showing the data and letting people decide for themselves without having some false narrative or pro propaganda put forth is why I created this so that the truth can be out there of what's actually happening. Um, so let's start here. We have, this is from Reuters and IPSOS, which is a uh, polling company that's in Paris, I believe, right? And this was June 17th, 2020. So what we have for them is that Joe Biden is leading by 10 points out of all adults, right? Um, in terms of who would win the election. Uh, now, this, that's, that's one piece of data, right? And then we have something from uh, Financial Times. This is, uh, I think, the London uh, news organization, right? So uh, here we have uh, Joe Biden winning um, a lot more electoral votes uh, than uh, Trump. But let's go into the actual data. Let's see what Americans are actually searching for. Because if you look at the sampling, of, of either one of these, I think I saw in here about 16,000, or no, that was something else, but the, even if the sampling was 16,000, right? If we look at Google, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of people searching on Google every single day. Across the nation, in every single state, in every single county. So we get a much more accurate representation of what the collective is actually thinking because we're actually going to the most unbiased source that we have right we can go into whether google is biased or not but when we're looking at a macro standpoint we can get the data from the source without having to play telephone and, and try to interpret through somebody else's words what the data means we can go look at the data ourselves and what i did is i looked at three time periods the 12 month the three month and the one month for search volume across to the United States for Joe Biden or Donald Trump. And we looked on Google and we looked on YouTube. If we look over here, this top line here uh, is saying that Donald Trump had three times more searches than Joe Biden. So if the, the total searches for those two names, it was three searches for Donald Trump versus one search for Joe Biden at the 12-month mark. At the three-month mark, it was uh, 
two to one, roughly. Uh, at the th one month mark, it was again two and a half to one or something like that. Then we went uh, from here. We went over to uh, the. This is on the YouTube search, but. I was just going through Google search and then we go, go over here and we did this on the web which we just went through as well as YouTube on YouTube again it's two and a half to one here it's um, maybe 1.7 here it's two to one here so across the board people are searching for Joe Biden substantially less than they're searching for Donald Trump on the two largest sites on the fucking planet right so that gives you some type of data point when when you see this, right? That that like people think Joe Biden is is like the best candidate, right? Or that he's going to win. But 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 in reality, people don't care about Biden nearly as much as they care about Trump. Okay. Remember that. Now, we take a look at four more factors and, and multiple things in each one. We take a look at each candidate's YouTube channel, each candidate's Facebook page, each candidate's Twitter account, and each candidate's Instagram account. So we're going to start with their YouTube. And this is the total number of subscriber, subscribers gained over the last 30 days. 75,000 for Trump versus 14 and change for Biden. So about a 5x increase uh, in terms of five times more subscribers gained over the last 30 days than Biden. Um, but uh, here, Biden does have a lot more views relative to the amount of subscribers he has because he actually just started his account in April of 2019. Um, so he has a, about half as many still, right, right? It's two to one. People are viewing Donald Trump's information about twice as much as they are with Joe Biden. Um, the Facebook page, there, uh, this is the total number of likes over the last 30 days, 311 versus 150 for, um, what's his face? Uh, Joe Biden. I'm curious why this keeps moving over. Let's do this. Okay, um, about twice as many for Joe Biden or for Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. Um, this is the total number of people talking about them. So right here we've got about four x increase in terms of four times more people are talking about uh, Donald Trump on Facebook than uh, Joe Biden. So remember, these numbers here are specific to the United States. These numbers here are more global, so they're not nearly as important as the search volume is, right? Search volume, it takes place within the U.S. borders, right? Or you can you can do that over here, and you could do it, say, worldwide or something else, and you can search for the search volume in the globe of where it's coming from, or you can do it in the United States specifically. So when you look at the search volume versus some of these other social factors, uh, all the data was gathered from Social Blade, which is an awesome aggregator for different social data. but the um, these social factors are less important, in my opinion, than the search volume because search volume is going to be um, a lot less bias uh, because there's no uh, global influence outside of the United States. Well, that that could be an important factor, but I think it's less important than the actual uh, people who are searching for the person online because that to me shows an actual gauge of interest for something, not just a, a respondent to some type of poll where the sheer nature of asking somebody to respond to something is going to influence the um, answer that they have. Uh, the next we have is Twitter. On Twitter, total number of, Trump has gained more than twice as many followers over the last 30 days than Joe Biden. Um, substantial, that's crazy too. The From a growth rate standpoint, I bet Joe Joe is growing faster though because he doesn't have as many followers. Uh, he's got what 2.6 million followers, where Trump has like 60 million followers. So the reach there is like eh, a little bit different. Um, total of media. This is kind of interesting. So this is the on Twitter. This is the total amount of media that was put out in the last 30 days, meaning tweets that have been tweeted in the last 30 days, um, as as a indicator of who is trying harder. Right. So. If, if I wanted to um, win a local election in a certain neighborhood, and we'll just say, for example, there's uh, 10,000 houses, and you wanted to win in this neighborhood too, and I went and knocked on 55,000 of those doors, 5,500 of those doors, and you knocked on 600 of them, 
like who do you think is going to have more awareness in the neighborhood and the same thing happens with social media the more you show up on that platform i.e twitter facebook youtube etc the more you show up on that platform in front of people's eyes the the more influence you're going to have in that neighborhood right in this case the neighborhood is virtual twitter right but that is made up of the individuals who are going to go vote. So there is a 5x increase in terms of the amount of work knocking on doors Donald Trump is doing relative to Joe Biden on Twitter. So that's kind of interesting. So you would expect growing. I would, if I'm showing up a lot more to uh, in front of people, uh, I would expect my growth rate to be my, me to be growing faster and 2x faster is, is pretty substantial. Um, Instagram. Uh, again, we have about a two to one here. Uh, not quite actually, uh, more like 1.7, 1.75 to uh, one here, where we've got 820,000 gained over the last 30 days versus 465 gained. Um, this is the, okay, so this is the um, level of engagement with the past, I think, 20 posts on Instagram. So this is the average number of comments and the average number of likes. because. We also want to understand like people are putting putting um, their voice out there, right? Because that tells you the type of, of engagement that you can expect coming in into November, or at least potentially a proxy for the direction of that support when you have the level of engagement. So we have um, engagement here. The average number of comments over the last twenty posts for um, Donald Trump is twenty five thousand. For uh, Joe Biden's 4,500, so a 5x increase in terms of more in people who are leaving comments on um, Donald Trump's uh, posts. Uh, the same thing for the average number of likes, about five and a half times more people are liking his posts than are liking Joe Biden. So that's kind of interesting. And if you go back through this list that we just went through of 15 different factors, you can see that this paints a completely different story than what is coming from Reuters or the Financial Times. And this is based on actual data, right? I'm not manipulating this shit. You can go look it up yourself. It's called Google Trends or Social Blade. You can go grab that data yourself and take a look at it in your spreadsheet. I will be putting this up on a website relatively soon, so make sure you press that subscribe button and that bell notification if you want to support like the actual truth in terms of the data of what's out there. I'll give you all the information so that you can do whatever you want with it and interpret it however you want to interpret it. I'm going to give you the data. You get to decide. I'm not going to put a narrative on what I believe is happening. I will put it out there. Maybe we can do a Q&A or that would be a separate show. But when you're just putting the data out there, you want to see what's actually happening in America versus what is put forth by organizations when there's clear biases. Uh, you can go back, back six months ago to, to the videos I did on the biases associated with polling, uh, the sampling, sampling methodology associated with this, uh, and how they go about gathering the data. Um, there's many, many, many different uh, biases that are created through collecting data in this manner um, that we know about. Like, there's economists, uh, people in mathematics, people in statistics, uh, there's like applied economics, and these are things that you have to study. You have to understand the biases that are you're creating or potentially trying to negate through the way you structure your sampling, through the way you structure your research, right? And we know about all those biases, and yet people still think this is the best way to gather information to understand what the actual public is interested in when we have all this other data just sitting here, but nobody talks about it. So if you support just the actual data and giving that to the people so people can decide, press that subscribe button and that bell notification so YouTube can notify you next time I post a video. I'm posting a lot of stuff. If you guys have any questions or thoughts, leave them down below or jump over to uh, Instagram and say what's good. There's also going to be a link down below for Instagram. And if you would like to see a Q&A, leave a hashtag Stolt down below in the comment section and I can get to your comment maybe at the end of another video. Appreciate you guys. Peace.